So what does it mean when your emotions and your feelings, those sensations that you're, you're those vibrations that you're feeling throughout your body, when they hurt, what is that and why do they hurt? We're going to be talking about that this week on episode 198 of The Relaxed Mail. This is The Relaxed Mail, a show that comes to you each week, helping men to remove the nice guy from their life so they can actually live their life on their terms. Join the host, certified coach, Brian Goodwin, as he helps men step out of their heads and become free from the thoughts that bind them. Hey, man. Hello, and welcome to the Relaxed Mail. I am your host, Brian, and I'm a certified men's coach that assist men who are just neck deep in the suffering of their lives, men who are going through a divorce, men who are just going through their whole day day-to-day suffering and struggles that they face. Life can come at us fast, and sometimes we just become so overwhelmed that we just we don't know what to do with ourselves. That's where I come in. I help men to sort out what's going on in their minds, change those thoughts that aren't serving them so that they can actually live the life that they want and live life on their terms. And in each episode, we just, we stop. And that's exactly what we do. We look at those de- their individual thoughts and different scenarios and circumstances that we often face in our lives. P- take them, look at them, take the thoughts out, look at those thoughts, examine those thoughts and understand what it is about those thoughts that we, that are holding us back and that are keeping us from being able to live completely and totally. And guys, I want to say thank you very much for uh, listening. Hopefully, uh, things are sa- still sounding pretty good. I'm still messing around a bit with the <laughs> with the audio and stuff on my, the, uh, the new setup. But at the same time, we are still pr- uh, still going along. This is episode 198. We've got two more weeks got till we actually start doing uh, hit the 200s. And for the 200th, I wanted to do a live episode a lot of where we I did some live training that's what I'm or tra- not training live coaching and why my brain is not wanting to work right <laughs> at the moment is beyond me but we've got uh, so we're I'm getting excited you know, with that I'm trying to get folks to uh, sign up so if you're interested in trying out what coaching is like and you want to have some coaching done and yeah it'll be it's going to be li- be streamed it's going to be played as a podcast down the road but wanted to just offer up a a formal invitation to you. And this the invitation is if you go to relaxedmail.com forward slash try coaching, that'll take you over to a sign up form. It's just your first name, last name, and email address. You'll receive a Zoom invite at, that'll be uh, available. For, so for the 14th, October 14th, 10 a.m., we're going to go live and we're going to have a, a little, if anybody shows up, we're going to have some coaching. So far, I've had some people sign up and uh, so I believe they're all going to show up. I would love for them to all show up, but at the same time, we will, uh, we're, we'll be doing a lot. Uh, we're doing a lot of coaching and, and, pro- and talking about what it, the thoughts are that are actually causing us to, uh, causing our problems. If you're interested in there, please, man, I'd love to have you come along. Let's let's have the have a great and powerful to, uh, discussion. So, also, if you're new to the show, hey, hello, welcome, glad you're able to make it. And uh, if you're want to be able to receive this podcast each and every week to your podcast app of choice, go ahead and just hit the the subscribe or follow button. And uh, every Thursday. It'll like clockwork. It'll come down, come down the pipes and land in your, in your phone and you can listen when it's uh, available for you. If you are interested in getting a, a podcast app, say you are using something like Spotify and it's, you're just getting absolutely exhausted of all the ads and stuff that they want to throw in there. You can actually go over to relaxedmail.com forward slash podcast to zero and podcast 20 and what that is that takes you over to the podcasting 2.0 apps and that will allow you to actually uh, get a podcast that will allow you to do the new things that are available in the uh, in the podcasting 2.0 uh, namespace and this is things like having alternative enclosures boost grant do boostergrams chapter episodes uh, chapters, episodes, funding. Um, you can actually even have uh, 
live. So anytime I go live, like I am right now, I could actually set that up on a tag so that if on certain podcasting 2.0 compliant uh, apps, you can actually would get a notification. Like if you were on Podverse, you use Podverse uh, podcasting app, you would have had a notice that it was like, hey, we're, we're live right now. And also, there's a lot of new cool things that uh, the guys who are working on the podcast 2.0 initiative are actually making. And so it's just, it's a, it's fascinating to watch them all work. And, uh, it also would like to welcome pod fans. I am now able to be found over on pod fans also. And, um, I'm working to see if I can get a how to website put together so that po- folks, um, who are of, my generation and a little bit older or, and they can figure out how do we do this? All, all this crazy podcast 2.0 stuff with these Satoshis and all that, because we do, It'll, you can actually tip in a way t- a tip. That's what a booster gram is, or you can actually stream sets to the, uh, uh, to the host. And if people use like their, uh, send over a special, like, cover art specially made for the uh for the show yeah the host can actually go off and s- set up the everything so that whenever say somebody sent them 100 satoshis you could actually send five percent of that or ten percent or even fifty percent of that over to the uh over to the creator of the of the cover art image and they would be able to reap some reward for being for, for providing value. And so I'm, I'm thinking this is, I've gone completely off script already. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyhow, this is, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm struggling here and trying to come up with a good means of explaining it. I didn't actually plan on talking a whole bunch about podcasting 2.0, but we're, we're already here and it's, it's interesting. It's fun. And we're, we're just going to swing with it. So, but anyhow, now that I've gotten that taken care of, uh, you can go, like I said, you can go to podcast, relaxedmail.com forward slash podcasting or podcast two zero, and you'll get the, uh, you can pull up all the different apps that are available that you can actually use for podcasting 2.0. So now let's jump into when your feelings hurt. A lot of people wonder about emotions and, and the way that they feel throughout our body and those are a lot of people will see, and I, I'm one myself. I've had emotions be so powerful that, like, especially the negative emotions, the fear based emotions, can be powerful enough to where they really do relate and feel like almost pain, like fear and just so gripping that your chest hurts and, uh, Anxiety uh, where your back just tenses up and you you almost can't move. And these, these do happen, but when you're feeling, when feelings hurt, we're going to really start breaking this down. And I want you to really examine what an actual, what these feelings that you, you're having actually are. And the, the main question I'll keep wanting to, wanting you to repeat over your head, over and over in your head is what are you telling yourself? That makes those emotions hurt, make those feelings hurt. Because, yeah, we, we there's a lot of people and a lot of psychiatrists and, and, and folks along those lines who equate emotions in our brain, process, kind of process those in the, generally the same area of the mind. And so they really can be confused. And there's a part of me that kind of sees how that can be, but there's an also a part, another part of me going, but really, is that is that just a is that really just a theory, or is that really just something that we that we struggle with? Is that do we really feel pain? And okay, yeah, we can we can feel the pain. And the reason why bad feelings are called bad feelings is because they don't feel good. Because if they felt good, they would, we'd have they'd be called a good feeling. And our life is always going to be fifty fifty. We're going to have half the time. Great emotions. We're going to have great feelings. The other half of the time is going to suck. We're going to have very unpleasant, uncomfortable feelings. That that second half is the one that gives us so many problems. This is those fear based emotions are the emotions that cause us to struggle with finding our our way out of 
depression, finding our way out of anxiety, finding our way out of any type of dark hole that we find, emotionally speaking, find ourselves in. But this, these emotions also cause us to avoid feeling them and avoid feeling the, the emotion as completely and wholly as we are, were actually able to, to do. And yeah, and it doesn't, it may, why would somebody want to feel that? I mean, why would you want to actually have an emotion and experience an emotion that doesn't feel good? Well, again, because our life is 50 50, our life is going to be 50% pain. But if you avoid the pain, avoid the thoughts that create the pain, you're going to end up having only living half your life. And you're going to wonder why the happy times aren't quite as sweet. And you're going to wonder why our, our horrible times seem so much, so much worse when we avoid having the good along with the bad. Now, I want to do, I do want to go ahead and break this down just a little bit and explain. Now, whenever I'm talking about emotions, when I'm uh, the the means of feelings and and what they're whenever I refer to them as hurting, that is the vibration that we feel. An emotion and our feelings are nothing more than vibrations. Some vibrate at a very pleasant level. Some vibrate at a very unpleasant level, and the vibrations can vary. We actually have. Love-based emotions that really just don't feel all that great. Take grief for one. People don't like grief, but yet it is one of the most beautiful and love-intense emotions out there. We grieve whenever an emotion, whenever a relationship dies. We die, we grieve whenever a whenever we lose a somebody. Like we've had, lost a uh, lost a parent or a relative. Of some sort, we will have a moment of grief, and that moment may be one day, one hour, one year. We can grieve, and it doesn't matter how long it takes. We're going to grieve at our own particular rate. But yet that grief many times doesn't feel pleasant. Yet it is, again, like I said, one of the more beautiful emotions that we can express about other humans. And so our our thoughts around the loss of our of our loved one creates different vibrations throughout our body and when we're in love those vibrations can be incredibly pleasant when we are in fear those vibrations are usually I, I like to call them sharp and jagged and not pleasant they're they're rough they're they're horrible feeling nine times out of ten but those thoughts are what create our emotions and so, like I said those those fear-based emotions can be rough and jagged and 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 often very hard and so they're not going to be pleasant to feel and when we experience that not so pleasant feeling we want to equate it to actual physical pain and it's not it's not a physical pain it's it may be perceived in our brain but it's physically speaking it's nothing more than just the vibration of the air it's just a mm, we can make this make different vibrations that can hurt our ears, but are they actually hurting our ears, or is it just the intensity and us perceiving that that intensity is painful, or is it because we, I mean, look at it this way: when we protect ourselves, we keep ourselves from being exposed to negative emotions. We're going to see any negative emotion as being painful. We're going to see any negative emotion as something that we want to avoid. And a good example of this is if you're used to wearing tennis shoes, our tennis shoes are made for comfort, believe it or not. We don't actually have to have tennis shoes to walk around. There are people in the jungle who walk around barefoot all the time. They have really thick, gnarly, rugged soles, and they can walk on stuff, and it does not hurt their feet. They can walk across sharp rocks and and not be phased by it. While us, we walk around without our shoes on concrete and we're kind of, ah, eh, oh, er, you know, we, <laughs> we struggle just to walk across rough surfaces. And that is because we have protected our feet. We've kept it wrapped in comfort for so long that whenever we go and try to walk across a gravel, you know, a gravel road, we're... We're hobbling around, barely able to walk. When we avoid our emotions, 
and we avoid the negative and the fear-based emotions, that's what happens is we are all of a sudden, our feet are being exposed to the exact same type of surface that somebody being used to, used to feeling bad emotions, feeling painful emotions, people who are used to it, they can walk and not really experience it. They still know that the emotion is happening. Yeah, but they're not going to be avoiding it as much as we are. We're going to sit there and try to look for the smoothest piece of rock that we could step on so that we don't have to worry about stepping on the rugged one and the sharp one. But yet, the more we can walk on the hard stuff and face the the jagged rocks of our lives, and we stop trying to avoid the emotions that we deem to be unpleasant, we find that our lives, yeah, we're going to have really crappy low times and we're going to have incredible high times. And those high times are going to be a lot sweeter because we've allowed ourselves to face and and work on and and build up a resistance and essentially calluses to the negative stuff. Yeah, it's it is rough. It's terrible. So, but at the same time, we it's something that we have to be able to do. We need to be able to do it. So, when it comes to our thoughts and our emotions, that means that we have a thought about, say, our thought uh, thought about our relationship falling apart, and that feels bad and that feels horrible. So many of us men pull up, you know, start grabbing for a bottle of, of booze, or we turn the pot, or we go to drown ourselves and and watch television or play video games or you know we avoid the hard thing instead of sitting down and having a that difficult discussion where our wife may yell at us and call us bad names for for an hour we avoid that so that we don't have to worry about you know what's going on what's why why is this all happening we can Find out what's happening in our life if we actually turn and face it instead of buffering against whatever horrible things we, we're afraid of. Our worry makes that, makes that energy usage double, if not triple. We're going to express our emotions. And yeah, it's, it's not a great sensation to, to do. However, it, being able to express our emotions, being able to share with those around us, especially with other men in our in our band of brothers, we can actually have a better time of processing what's happening in our lives. We can actually go talk to our our band of brothers and see, hey man, I had a horrible discussion with my with my wife last night, and it is she is not happy in eight ways to in any way possible. So what do I do and you have your band of brothers all, are all going to be there and they're all going to help you out. If we avoid those emotions, we avoid facing those and avoid having to feel those, we're going to get ourselves into trouble. We're going to take those circumstances. And that's one of the deals that we have. It's not actually the event that we're not that we're actually upset about. Yeah, we get upset. We have a thought about it because, okay, hold up. Let me back up a little bit because... When we have an event, we have a circumstance happen. Say our wife has said at two o'clock in the morning, woke us up and says, I need to talk. You're going to have a thought about that. You're going to have a thought about whatever it is that she's talked to and talking about. All right. You have that thought and that thought is going to generate the emotional response. It's going to generate whatever vibration you're feeling, that feeling of dread feeling of sorrow, feeling of anger, resentment, frustration, whatever the emotion is, you're going to have a thought that creates that that emotion. But then what happens is we start to ruminate. And so we go over that thought and we go over the fact that we're feeling a particular emotion and we bundle all that together. And so now we have a new thought about the thought that we have. And we have a thought about the emotion that we have. And because we start allowing all that snowball instead of processing the first emotion first and letting that go, because when you're letting an emotion just be, and instead of just process and thinking that emotion over and over and over and over again, if you stop and actually focus in on what you're, what you're feeling and examine it and is it hot and cold you know do going through the uh, the actual steps of processing your emotions 
you're going to find that the emotion itself only lasts about an hour, um, an hour, a minute and a half, maybe two at the longest. But you're, and, and I get it. I get it. You're, I, I hear you saying, no, I know it lasts a heck of a lot longer than that because I, you know, when my wife wanted a divorce, that, fa- that pain lasted for months, if not years. I'm still trying to get over it. I still hurt because of that. And it's not because of that particular emotion. It's because you are sad and you've held on to that. You've avoided feeling sad. You've resisted that emotion. You've started resisting that. And because you keep shoving it off and you keep finding other ways to keep from feeling that sadness and the thoughts that you have over what that sadness is and what you're making that sadness mean, it allows that emotion to grow and keep and it keeps it alive. If you actually stop, examine what the emotion is, see what it's, what it, how it actually feels. Where are you actually feeling it throughout your body? Are you? Is it hot? Is it cold? Is it soft? Is it hard? Is it spiky? Is it fluffy? Is it feathery? Is it you know? And describe it as detailed as you can get. Is it smooth? Is it scaly? Does it look like? Does it feel like sandpaper? Does it feel like, you know, a golf ball? What what does it feel like? You can describe that emotion. And the more you describe it, the less that emotion's going to feel. And you're going to soon eventually realize, holy crap, I, I, I don't feel that emotion anymore. And you can go through and you can feel all the rest of it. But if you avoid that emotion, you're going to continually having the thoughts about that emotion over and over and over again. And you're not going to let it live its course. Because if you don't let an emotion run its course, it becomes immortal until it gets addressed. It gets bigger, becomes that squeaky wheel. And at first, it's just a little small, just squeak. Eventually, it's going to rattle your brain. It's squeaking so loud. You Facing those emotions is a lot like to, is taking responsibility. You have to face that bull. And the sooner you face that bull, the easier it is for you to handle it. If you let the bull keep trying to dodge the bull, eventually it's going to come along. It's going to be pissed off enough that it's going to run your butt over. So how do we stop feeling pain? And this is what kind of goes against common thought. And that is you don't. When you realize you're feeling negative pain, when you're feeling the pain of life, you want to step into it. You want to accept that that pain is there. Welcome it. it be good. Be happy with it, it, which sounds weird. And I don't actually mean celebrate and, you know, have a party. Yeah, I feel like I feel depressed today. But you want to accept it and invite it into you and let it live its course. Examine why you feel depressed. Examine why you have anxiety. And I'll let you know that anxiety is just one breath away from exhilaration. To feel the pain of of life allows you to live life 100%. Because remember, our life is 50% pain, 50% pleasure. And when we allow that pain to go, to be there, we allow the pleasure to be there too. And we get to live 100% of our life. We get to live completely and fully. And we have a 100% experience of being a full human. And that, I believe that is where most of society is struggling, is they are so damn busy trying to avoid being in pain. They have decided, you know what, I need to, I need to feel happy all the time. No, you don't want to feel happy all the time. You go to Aunt Gladys's funeral, you don't want to be standing there laughing like a loon. You want to be sad. You want to cry. Your friend's best hunting dog got shot. You want to be there with you with him at the bar and have an arm over his shoulder and feeling bad that Bold Blue ain't there no more. He was a good dog. I understand there are there are times that being in pain is good and it's wonderful and it completes you. A lot of times these very unpleasant emotions are a lot like a fun house. It's really scary and you have a lot of apprehension. First, going into that house, what are we going to face? I mean, are we are we ever going to find our way out of that hall of mirrors? But by the time we get out, we are laughing because of the experience. We are so joyous because of that experience. Don't be afraid of those negative emotions. They are there. They're not pleasant. 
They're not supposed to be pleasant, but that's okay. We welcome them just the same because we're men. If you want help on getting these negative emotions and start changing and processing these negative emotions, reach out to me. Let's coach our way through whatever it is that's causing you this type of pain. Let's coach our, let me coach you through whatever it is that you're, you're, you're struggling with because what is happening is you're avoiding the good parts of life. Essentially, if you want to be able to feel more in control of yourself, if you want to be able to connect more confidently in your relationships, this is where my coaching can help you. You'd be able to be the husband that you want to be your, you'd be the father that your children need you to be. And you would be the friend that your band of brothers needs you to be all by simply changing the habits of what you think. If you want help doing that, reach out to me, go to relaxmail.com forward slash coaching and, and, and schedule a time from let's have a consulting call and see what it is that we can do to help each other. All right. So guys, with that, I want to say thank you very much for uh, listening again, October 14th, 10 o'clock. We're having to try coaching. Go to relaxedmail.com forward slash coaching, try coaching and see what coaching is like. It's, it's going to be, it's free. I'm not charging anything for the, for that. The value I'm getting is that I've got material to be able to put on the podcast. That's the whole thing. I just want to be able to show people what coaching is about. Because I'm sure a lot of you guys are going coaching. Yeah, that's just I'm, I don't need a therapist. Coaching's not therapy. All right. If you need therapy, I'll let you know, dude. You you really want to go talk to find a therapist and talk to them because therapists help you clean your past up so that the coaches can take you and carry you, and not even carry you, but show you the future that is possible. So guys, with that, I want to say thank you very much. If you found anything in this podcast uh, resonated with you and found it useful, share it out. Share it with your band of brothers. Share it out on Facebook, Instagram, threads. Share it out everywhere that you listen to uh, or that you interact with your friends and family with. Let them know that we have relaxed mail out there. We are still growing. I'd love to be able to grow a little bit faster, but at the same time, I'm I'm happy with what what we get. I'd like to be able to grow a little more, and I can only do that if you end up letting people know that there's relaxed mail going on. Relaxed mail is is out there to help guys be able to find their path and so they can live their life on their terms. And so many men right now are struggling and hurting because they don't think that there's a this world is even cares about them, and they could be they couldn't be more wrong. So guys, thank you again for listening. Y'all take care. See y'all next week. Till then. Bye.